Sports Snippets. Dennis Sullivan, how the heck you doing here? Saturday morning, actually, talking a little Miami Dolphins due to the Thursday night game. Normally, normally I will recap the games right, pretty much right after it concludes, but of course, uh, with work Friday and all that, and you know, I am more than happy to be here with you on Saturday morning to discuss this wonderful event known as a 22-10 Miami Dolphin victory over the Baltimore Ravens. Before I get started, if you do like content of this particular video, go ahead, hit the thumbs up. That would be spectacular. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, Sports Snippets with Dennis Sullivan as well. So guys, let's get started. This was absolutely unexpected but boy sometimes you know you just watch a football game or any type of sporting event for that matter and it is just completely unexpected in your favor this time where the, you know you, we, we've had enough where where your team unexpectedly plays terrible how about one where your team plays awesome and gets the victory in the process over a really good team in the Baltimore Ravens by 12 points once again 22 to 10 some takeaways from this and watching it at home I had some main points a couple of things I wrote down actually throughout the game and want to share those with you and let me know what you think as well guys I always promote your input so whew, number one thing that stands out in this game was the defensive intensity for the Miami Dolphins just would not let up I mean I, w I thought I was watching almost the Miami Hurricanes mid to late 80s in their prime with the, with the intensity level. It never slowed down. It never really dec decreased. It was absolutely fantastic. Lamar Jackson was under pressure pretty much the entire game. He was... He was running this way, dodging that way. Extremely talented player, we all know, is Lamar Jackson. But he was basically in a, in a spot where he really couldn't come up with an answer. There was really nothing he could do. There were just too many defenders coming at him from too many angles. The Dolphins' offense, of course, eh, you know, it was it was kind of hit or miss there, and I'll get into that a little bit more detail in just a few seconds, actually. But the other main takeaway, though, was offensive-related. Of course, the injury to Jacoby Brissett brings in the previously injured Tua with the broken finger on his throwing hand that apparently had healed rather quickly. He was suited up as a backup and then would play pretty much the entire second half. Just to touch on the Jacoby Brissett situation, when I'm, I'm watching this game and I see him on the ground, you know, he's like holding his knee and everything. I, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking that that's it. He, he's he's going to be out for the year. I mean, that was my first thought. I'm thinking he, he's going to be out for the year. And... Much to my pleasant surprise, when I come back, uh, you know, I stepped away. I got, I don't know, <laughs> something to eat or whatever, commercial. I come back, commercial's ending, and he's on the sidelines kind of moving around. They're talking about how Jacoby Brissett was a little bit uh, frustrated in that he did not re-enter the game, were the TV announcers. And I can say this. I want to touch on that because... If we go back to the first quarter, as we all recall, Jacoby Brissett, he gets off to this slow start. He completed only one of his first five passes, 16 yards, missed a, missed a throw, was under, was under pressure, under duress. You're sitting there thinking, oh, wow, it's going to be a rough one for, the, for Jacoby and the offense. You know, maybe we'll score 10 points, something like that. But then the second quarter, I mean, was completely different for him. And he would go into the half with 156 yards through the air, guys, which is very impressive. Almost all of those coming in the second quarter. He was hitting throws down the field. He was mainly, from what I observed, 
observed making things happen. In other words, he was avoiding the pressure, he was moving out, using his mobility, and he was finding the open man. And he would go 11 for 23. Now you might say to yourself, well, yeah, the 11 for 23. Yeah, but still, no turnovers, no interceptions, no touchdowns. Made some nice throws down the field. Made some things happen through for 156 yards. So if I'm Jacoby Brissett, yeah, I am a little bit frustrated at that. Because I was making progress in this game. I was playing for at least that quarter. That was the best football I've been playing this season. Because... Heck, it was it was all pro second quarter for Jacoby Brissett. Tua comes in and then plays pretty well, right? So he plays most of the second half, 8 of 1,358 yards. So you take Tua's 158, Jacoby's 156. We're looking at about 314 yards through the air. Who would have thought? Nice job, Miami. The running game was slowed. It was it was not really uh, that effective. But again, the Dolphins, once again, stay at least somewhat committed to the run. And they do put together about 22 carries combined if we add in Tua and Jacoby. Right? From the backfield, you're looking at about 18 carries. I'll take it. Gaskin goes 14 carries, 31 yards. Albert Wilson, 2 for 19. That brought up the average. Salvin Ahmed, two for six, two carries, six yards. Brissett, one carry, four yards. Tua, three carries. Doesn't get credited with any yards, but he did have the touchdown run. So in terms of the offense, I mean, you know, it wasn't the greatest performance. This was hands down, hands down the best performance by the Miami Dolphins this season through 10 games. I mean, is there a second best? Per- no, there's actually not a second best performance by the Miami Dolphins this year, even though they had won two previous games. Dolphins improved their record to three and seven. And we'll talk about what happens next week in just a moment. So stay tuned. That's right. Stay tuned. Don't leave me now. Uh, the Ravens as well. We will discuss them in just a brief moment. As far as the receiving core, guys, this this was interesting. Now, this this was also a little bit impressive in that the Dolphins featured guys that they normally wouldn't feature, found ways to get them open. In Albert Wilson, four catches, 87 yards. Are you kidding me? And Isaiah Ford, four catches, 84 yards. So just between Wilson and Ford, you're looking at about 170 yards receiving. Never would have thought that. Jalen Waddell... Definitely, again, has a positive impact. Four catches, 61 yards. He has been very consistent this season, been involved in the offense all year. One thing that really caught my attention with Jaden Waddell is that I did not realize really until the Raven game on Thursday night, the guy can hold on to the ball when getting hit in these bang-bang situations that throw down the the fields about 35 or so yards he get he takes a shot holds on to the ball and i've seen him do that a few times this season he's very good at that maintaining possession securing the catch okay so that's probably the best way for me to explain that to you he's very good at securing the catch and I'm now becoming, slowly but surely, more and more of a Jalen Waddle fan. Adam Shaheen, three catches, 34 yards. Durham Smythe, a catch for 23 yards. And that's that tight end over the middle dolphin attack factor that we saw there. Gaskin out of the backfield, catch for 14. Ahmed out of the backfield, catch for 9 yards. And Patrick Laird out of the backfield, catch for 2 yards. Big surprise was Mike Gusecki did not catch a pass, but maybe that was part of the whole scheme. We're going to go with guys that normally we never, hardly ever feature, hardly. And the, our go-to guy, uh, Gusecki, who really is the go-to guy in terms of over the middle uh, pass plays, he is basically, along with Jaden Waddle, that is your best receiver with Waddle. Those are your two two main guys and they basically just decoyed him really and uh, of course if you have him on your fantasy team you're not very happy about that but look to see a lot more of Mike Gusecki in weeks to come 
Jason Sanders, three for three in his field goal attempts. Very nice work there. He's a very good kicker. Uh, all short field goal attempts, but he converts all three with a long of 31 yards. Lamar Jackson, 26 out of 43. As discussed, he was under duress all game. 238 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Jackson would add 39 yards on the ground on nine carries. Extremely talented player. Devonta Freeman. Now, Devonta Freeman's a good running back. The the I almost said the Falcons because I'm so used to being for him playing for the Falcons. The Ravens had a tough time running the football. Credit Miami Dolphins. Freeman would finish 10 carries, 35 yards. Devin Duvernay, Duvere, I'm sorry if I messed up uh, his last name there. He had a carry for 19 yards. Le'Veon Bell, three carries for a yard. Rashawn Bateman would lead the way for the Ravens in receiving with six catches for 80 yards. Mark Andrews, the tight end, six catches, 63 yards, and a touchdown. Marquise Brown, six catches, 37 yards. DuVernay, four catches, 28 yards. Freeman out of the backfield, three for 23. Sammy Watkins, a catch for seven yards. So guys, this was absolutely, and I'll, and I'll go back to what I said a few moments ago, hands down, beyond the shadow of a doubt, this was by far the best Miami Dolphin performance of the season. Will this continue? continue? Well, that's why we're going to be watching the next game and games thereafter to see if this improved play continues. Because the na now the Dolphins sit at 3-7, and seven, and you're sitting there probably going, well, what's so good about that? There's actually nothing really good about that. But they have won two games in a row with, with a chance to stretch that winning streak to three games in Week 11 because they will play at the Jets on the 21st of November. That's a 1 o'clock game week 11 at the New York Jets. That is a big game, guys. If you're a Dolphin fan, you're, you're sitting there going, okay, we could actually win our third straight game, move to four and seven. Okay, you know, we'll take it, uh, considering everything that's happened. For the Ravens, actually, the Ravens fall to six and three. One of the better teams in the AFC they didn't really look at on Thursday night, but these things happen. The Ravens now actually have a difficult game in Week 11. They got to travel to Chicago to take on what appears to be an improved Chicago Bear team. For those of you that watched that game, which was very entertaining last Monday night, Pittsburgh Steelers and Chicago Bears. The Bears really should have won that game, and they played a very good second half against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So Ravens will travel to Chicago in week 11. Stay tuned for that as well. That's actually an interesting matchup the more and more I think about it. So guys, leave me a comment. This is very good stuff here. Very good news that the Dolphins find a way to almost put it all together, really. I mean, was that a flawless offensive performance? No. But the intensity level was there. It really wasn't even close to flawless on offense, but, but we'll take it. They made enough plays. The defensive intensity was there. That was really a playoff-type intensity by the Miami Dolphins. Got to love that. It is, a, it is a, a credit to Coach Brian Flores, like I've said before. He is good. He's a good motivator. Okay, I'm not inside the locker room there, guys, listening in, but something tells me he knows how to get the most out of what he has. The only problem is the slow start, obviously, and then the seven-game losing streak. I mean, obviously, we can't, we can't erase that. We can't redo that. But that is why I like Brian Flores. He does have that ability to really get the team to kind of step up to the occasion. I've seen this before. And that's when you see a lot of special teams type of stuff going on and big plays by the defense and things like that. So, guys, leave me a comment. Great talking to you about the Dolphins, as always. I love putting these videos together just to share my thoughts. Hope you enjoy it as well. I will definitely talk to you soon, very soon. Bye for now. See you next time.